I've known Anna since primary school, we're both 26 now, and she recently got engaged to her boyfriend of 11 years. My relationship with her has been on and off for years due to us leading completely different lifestyles, study times, and work times. But we still kept contact nonetheless. I received her wedding invitation in the first week of December. The wedding will be in the first week of February. She's now living in a city 14 hours away from my home. My sister and her family also live in that city. During the holidays, my sister asked me if I'd travel to her city to dog sit for them, since it would be out of their budget to take the dog to a doggy daycare, but they could afford my travel and food expenses. I agreed because I'm on vacation now, but I have my last finals in late February through March. So I wanted to go out somewhere far from my family to be able to focus better. Besides, the wedding will happen while I'm there anyway, so I'd still travel all the way. I let Anna know of my travel plans so we could set a hangout or something, and she told me that since I was going so early, I could go to her bridal shower. I was eager to say yes, until she dropped that since I'd have my sister's house to myself, I could host the bridal shower there. I just laughed, thinking she was joking, but she was very serious and got impatient, saying that since I haven't been constant in her life for the past five years, since she moved 14 hours away from me, the least I could do to get back in her good graces was to host the bridal shower at my sister's house. I just laughed more and told her that I couldn't do that in a million years since I don't have that authorization from my sister and I wouldn't get it since they don't know each other. Anna didn't answer after that and this morning she texted me that I was uninvited to her wedding since I don't hold her friendship in high regard as she thought. I'm not going to argue with her any longer. To be honest, I'm not that hurt. We did grow distant over time, but it's still sad to see your true colors after so long. Uninvited? Whew! That'll save me a bunch of money on gifts for someone who hasn't even bothered to get back into my good graces. What a relief. Okay, no problem. I get to enjoy vacation time, save money on wedding gift, return it if already bought, and get rid of entitled so-called friend. All good. I was going to give her an envelope with cash inside because I barely knew what she liked anymore, so no losses there. I did buy a dress though, I guess I'll take my sister's dog for walks in it. This happened around Christmas. My grandmother had died the previous year, and my brother had been living with her. However, after being told before my grandmother died that the house would be sold, he refused to move out, saying, I am working on it. Not sure what he was working on, but it didn't look like anything whenever we came to give him food. He has a job, yet never seemed to buy food. He always calls me up demanding some of mine, or demands it from my mother. Well, Christmas, I was terribly ill. I had called out of work and wrote on Facebook that I didn't want to be bothered. The doctor said it was just a cold, but it was horrible. Whenever I breathed, I wheezed and rattled. I felt like I was in no fit state to do anything. However, my ever-loving family didn't accept sickness as a reason to skip Christmas. So my brother came and complained as he dragged me out to take me to our mother's. In the car, he smoked and said I was faking my sickness as I kept having coughing fits. He went on and on about how mom was selling the house right out from underneath him, how the house belonged to him, how mom gave away grandma's car to our sister when it was his and so forth. I was trying to stay awake, but I wasn't well, and him telling me all the things that belonged to him that weren't his was bothering me. We got to my mom's and it was a nice time. Well, I think it was. I fell asleep and was woken up for dinner. My brother was mad that he got yelled at for smoking near a sick person. Dinner was the eye-opener. It is so nice that you are allowing your brother to live with you. I had no idea you were so close, said my mother. What? No, I started. Have some more water. You sound terrible, said my brother, forcing water onto me. I was worried he had no place to stay, but you are helping him, my mom went on. Yes, she is, like a good big sister. She invited me to come take care of her. You know, cause she's special and all, said my brother. No, <coughs> I didn't. He's not, I tried to say, but ended up in a coughing fit. She didn't invite you to stay, asked my mom. She did, cried my brother before he leaned over and whispered to me. Don't be a wuss bag, you. I don't even want to write the slur he said here. I'm not able to have anyone else on my lease or to live with me. I choked out after my fit. We'll lie, said my brother cheerfully. I glared at him. How will I lie? I am special, and special people can't lie. I snapped as best I could at him. Well, that ended dinner. Before my brother was supposed to take me home, my mom offered, but my brother insisted he would. 
I had learned from my sisters, other brother, father, and mother that my brother had been going around telling everyone that he was moving in with me. He had told them that I was going to get a bigger place and he wouldn't even have to pay rent. I couldn't believe it. He drove me home. I was mad, but he was going on about how he was homeless when we were going back. So, stupidly, after he brought in the gifts from others to me, I allowed him to stay the night. I figured, it's Christmas. It's a nice thing to do after all. This was a terrible idea. He smoked, so my place smelt like a smoker's place. He blasted the TV even after I told him not to. The neighbors won't mind, he said. He raided my kitchen to the point I needed to go food shopping right away. And he wouldn't leave until I grabbed the phone and told him I was going to call the cops and then mom. After his visit, he kept telling people he was going to live with me. I took longer to recover from the cold. And while cleaning up the mess he left, I found soot marks and even a needle full of strange stuff mixed in with my cat's toys. Mind you, I found that needle by the fact I almost got it in the foot. My home looked like a rock star trashed it. My friends came over and helped me finish cleaning. As the new year hit, my mom thanked me for helping my brother. And I told her, I am not. I love him. For God's sake, I do love him but he is not welcome to my home ever again. I am so mad at him, I don't want to see him. But he is homeless. His fault, he had over a year to find a place. I found one in less than 30 days when you guys kicked me out of the house. But he is your brother, whom partied like a rock star in my apartment and smoked around someone who can't breathe. Yeah, not having it. Also, there was a needle here. You are diabetic, is it yours? Nope, I'll ask your brother. Thought that was the end of it. But a few days after that, my friend and I were at my place when my brother stopped in to check on me. As I was now mostly recovered, he explained the needle with an answer that was slang for a certain drug that he said he was injecting into warts to get rid of them, and he demanded it back. I told him I threw it out. He offered to take out my trash, which I repeatedly told him I was fine. He finished by giving me a long-winded speech about how useful it would be to have him live with me. I literally had to push him out the door and tell him I'd rather be eaten alive by piranhas than ever live with him again, as he is a nightmare. As it stands, it has been about nine months since then. He is now mooching off his friend and still telling anyone whom will listen how he turned me down when I asked him to live with me. My mom is honestly getting a bit of a laugh out of it since my brother has been changing the story so much over all this time. I haven't seen him since I made him leave, and honestly, I am good with that. This post makes me extremely, exuberantly happy that I am an only child. Holy hell, that was a lot to unpack. I've dealt with some overbearing jackwagons, but this one takes the prize. Jeez Louise, you are so much nicer than my petty behind. He could have talked until he was blue in the face. He would still be doing it from the other side of my door. Also, love the parents whining when you won't take him in, but I don't see them offering up their house. That is always so telling. So, my older sister is 20, and years ago, she was in a terrible incident which got her pregnant. I don't want to go into too much details, nor do I want to expose her much, but it caused her to be mentally disturbed and was in terrible health. She didn't have that child. Now, this is well known in the family because it was a big incident. So, here comes the entitled person in the story, our Auntie Maddie. Maddie wasn't there when the incident happened. In fact, she joined our family months after it. Maddie is married to our uncle, and she always wanted a child of her own. Last year, she did conceive, but unfortunately, it was a miscarriage. Everyone felt so sorry for her that year, until it was Maddie's birthday. We all celebrated by going to a little house party, but that was when things got really uncomfortable. And mind you, my sister and auntie are the only females who are 20 and above in the family. M. Hey, my sister, I want to ask you something. S. What is it? M. This might be rude to ask, but is it true you were pregnant before? S. Uh. M. What happened to the baby? S. I don't really want to say. M. Please, I just want to know something. S. Sorry, but I feel really uncomfortable with this and don't want to talk about it in any more details. M. Please look at me. We're family, and family help each other in their time of need. Only you can help me fulfill my dreams of having a happy family. At this point, Maddie became more crazy and started shaking my sister by the shoulder. My sister claimed it was like talking to a nut job since she wouldn't stop bothering about the whole thing. A. Please, my sister. I want to adopt your child. I want to have a baby. 
Some of the party began noticing and pulled Maddie away. My sister felt very uncomfortable around Maddie and decided to just leave the party, and I left with her as she filled me in on the details of what happened. This left them feeling uncomfortable and wary around one another for a long time. In fact, my sister literally avoids her like the plague. Until it was my older brother's birthday a couple of months back. Maddie arrived with uncle cause unfortunately, since it was a family celebration, Maddie came along with uncle. At the party, Maddie seemed like she was calm and chill. She even apologized to my sister for what she did. My sister did forgive her since they were family and she didn't want to be more uncomfortable. Until it was time to open the presents. Maddie gave my sister a sorry gift and when she opened up the present Maddie gave her, inside was a ducking baby outfit with a small handmade card that says, will you help me by giving me a child? There was a huge awkward silence. Like no one could say anything. Maddie looked like there was nothing wrong and asked her in front of the other family members. M, listen, my sister, I really want a child and I beg of you to please give me a child. It doesn't have to be the one you put up for adoption. You can even give me a new one and I'll be completely okay with it. My sister was so pissed that she ran off to her room and locked herself in for the rest of the day. My uncle was furious, as well as the rest of the family members, as they started swearing at Maddie for doing something so shameless and disgusting. Like, honestly, what is wrong with this bee? Apparently, uncle told me they can't have kids, but he didn't want to tell me the details, and that's what is causing Maddie to go ballistic for my sister to give her a kid. Then, Maddie sent a text. M, you have to give birth to my child. I am desperate. Please give me a kid. Me and uncle can't be a proper family without one. My sister blocked her before she could send any more. A week after, I got a message from Maddie and someone spilt the beans to Maddie that my sister didn't have the child. M. OP. Tell your sister this. You are disgusting. You didn't have a lovely bundle of life that could have been my kid. If you didn't want the kid, then I could have had them instead. You have the wonderful privilege to have children, and instead of using that privilege, you decided to destroy that vulnerable life that was once inside you. I hope you're happy, M. I quickly informed my parents, my sister and uncle about the text, and Maddie received a lot of angry calls and messages from a lot of family members. Even uncle, who put his foot down, threatened to divorce her if she don't shut her mouth. He said he was thinking about getting her checked by a doctor, cause clearly there's something wrong with her. It could be the miscarriage that's causing her to be like this, but not quite sure. Right now, everyone is distancing themselves from Maddie. Me and my sister have already blocked her on everything and we decided not to get involved with her anymore, even if she is family. My mind is blown. From the first party, and the way she threatened the sister, I'm surprised no one even glanced at filling her in, or that the uncle, her husband, didn't clue her in at all. I think she has to have known the details. She knows the sister was pregnant. What conversation led to that point, and the disappearance of the pregnancy baby mysteriously shuts up at that point, and leaves it open to anyone's guess. She should have asked questions like, where is that baby now? Who is adopted, etc. And the uncle presumably said nothing in reply? No. She's full-blown mental. But to then go on repeatedly for the same thing, surrogate our baby, twice at the two semi-public meetings in, I guess, a year, when she's previously been shut down, caused a scene or harm and knew enough to apologize, to then try it again. It's someone else's birthday and she's giving the sister a gift. What's up with that? Full blown mental. I understand that desperately wanting a child that you can't have can cause such pain that it can affect one's ability to behave appropriately. However, Maddie sounds so unstable and unaware that I would not want to give her any children I had. When adoption is done to benefit the child, it is normally a good thing. When it is done to fix a broken adult, they are probably expecting too much magic from the adoption. It's possible that the miscarriage and or inability to conceive caused some kind of psychotic break. But whatever the reason, Maddie is completely off her rocker if she thinks any of this behavior is all right. She needs some serious psychotherapy, and if she refuses, your uncle should probably seriously consider making good on that divorce threat.